the podcast nowhere near Hollywood. It's afternoon coffee with Mike and Tim. Hey, that was good. Uh, what I was thinking was maybe welcome to the afternoon coffee podcast with Mike and Tim. <laughs> nice try, boys. But this is how it should sound. This is the afternoon coffee podcast with Mike and Tim. Hello and welcome to Afternoon Coffee with Mike and Tim. Uh, This is part two of our interview with Mike Wagner. Of course, he was interviewing us at the same time. So uh, a little back and forth. He has a great podcast, by the way, if you want to check it out. It's, uh, you can find archives of shows and uh, present shows at themikewagnershow.com. Of course, he's on Facebook, he's on Twitter, he's on uh, Instagram. Just do a little search and you'll be able to find him. So anyway, this is part two. Thanks for tuning in and uh, hope you enjoy. Speaking of the old time radio and all that, I do have a radio uh, uh, station and it's online. And if I could advertise that now, that'd be great. Go ahead. Thank you. It's swr.radiostream123.com. I play Doris Day, Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, uh, uh, Ozzie and Harriet, all those old shows, uh, Henry Aldridge, and um, Twilight Zone, and Paul Harvey, News at the Top of the Hour, just all that good stuff. And then M- Mike is one of the key key announcer guys on on my radio broadcast. So he does a lot of the uh, the imaging on that. Nice. But, uh, that's another okay. that's another kudos to to Mike. What he does is a um, he does super on radio imaging. I mean, just if you want a radio imaging guy, MikeTarnow.com. That is amazing too. And Mike, what's some of your favorite uh, old time radio shows you've listened to? Well, you know, I've listened to a lot of what uh, what he's got got on there, and I like Father Knows Best. I like Blondie. Uh, you know, just, just some of those that I was much more familiar with back then. Some of the stuff I had, I had not heard Henry Aldrich. I don't think I had heard him before I started listening to Tim's radio station, but, uh, but a lot of that stuff is, just, it just brings you back to the old, old memories and, and when you were a kid and, and everything was simpler. Yeah. That, to me, that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. And, and what was your favorite one personally? Uh, well, you know, I, I think, I still think that father knows best is, is one of those, one of those staples to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite. I, I still have to say the shadow is one of my favorites as well too. And, um, also war of the worlds is still an amazing classic. It's like, you know, I remember listening to CBS radio, Missy theater, you know, back in the day in Chicago. And is this actually real? And I read the story that they made it so real that people in New Jersey and all over the world actually believed it. And it yeah, was just a power, of, a power of radio. It's just so amazing. I have to say that. So what year did that happen? I remember my parents telling me about that. I mean, what, what year was that? Do you remember? I think it's it around 1939. I think it's like was somewhere it? in the thirties. If I remember that. And, um, yeah. and Tim, you're in Tim, you're an old time radio buff. Uh, what year did war of the worlds come out on radio? Yeah. It, it, I would say would like you guys be in the thirties and we'll definitely would, would have uh, would have that here in just a second, but yeah, one of my favorites, or probably my all-time favorite old radio broadcast, is Dragnet. So, oh yes, I excellent. remember that. <laughs> oh, as a matter of fact, Tim and I have a Christmas Dragnet that we are overdubbing. <laughs> well, it's not overdubbing because there's no video, <laughs> but but we're 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 redoing with our own voices, and it's uh and it, it I think it's turned out fantastic so far. But that'll be it's a Christmas one, and it'll be out next year, and we'll uh we'll put that online for everybody, and uh I think I, I think you'll enjoy it. So I do too. I, I like the Dragnet too. Yeah, I used to like the Dragnet yeah. TV show. So. Oh, I remember that so well too. Yeah. Who was it? Um, Jack Webb or Jack Sandy yeah, Jack or something? Webb. Absolutely. Jack yeah. Webb. That's it. Okay. Yep. And of course, you also learn a lot about the crimes as well too, and um, not over dramatized. It's like you know, the crime happened on this day, and um, what you learn from it, the sentencing, and um, everything else. It was amazing. It was. Okay. Here's the here's the, here's the history of the War of the Worlds. The War of the Worlds has been both popular, having been in and out of print, and influential, spawning half a dozen feature films, radio dramas, a record album, various comic book adaptations, a number of television series, and sequels or parallel stories by other authors. Now, here's the meat of it. It was most memorably dramatized or dramatized in a 1938 radio program that allegedly 
caused public panic among listeners who did not know the Martian invasion was fiction. So, H.G. Wells. That was interesting. Yes, good old H.G. Wells. I'm going to have to have that on my radio program. That's for sure. And I'd hate to give a plug. I'd hate to give, I would hate to (laughs) give a plug. Yeah, you hate it. You, you don't hate it at all. I would hate to hate do it. that. Yeah, quit, quit, quit <laughs> almost looks like I'm in the that. witness protection program. <laughs> uh, you guys can't see the video. I've got a huge well, 1690 looks, AM WHAX. It's not about me, Mike. But, he looks familiar, but I, it seems like it's a radio station instead of <laughs> instead of a face. I can't figure it out. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me. Good to see you. <laughs> 1690 WHAX. Oh my goodness. Well, hey, we're gonna flip the we're gonna flip the tables on you, Mike. Here, uh, you've interviewed a lot of very interesting people. Uh, what what some of the most famous people you've interviewed, and maybe somebody that might have turned out even really good that you didn't expect, or really bad that you expected better. Well, I'm gonna say this: the two best people right now are you, Mike, and you, Tim. Those yes. are my number one and two right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I am so honored. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> I'd like thank to thank the Mike Wagner Show for making this possible. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom, thank my dad, my dog, and everything <laughs> else down the board. And, oh, yeah, I thank God for this whole thing, too. Thank you, Mom, it's for reminding me. <laughs> and, yeah, and that's course, it. And, 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 of course, you know, I, I did I did interview a lot of people, too. And so far, I'm at 300 right now, starting in wow. August wow. 2018. Sandy Helberg was my very first one, and I did on the radio station before I switched everything over to the podcast at KFYR. And um, he he was he appeared in a number of uh, Mel Brooks movies, and um, he 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 his family was survivors of the Holocaust, which made it amazing. And he uh, was in History of the World. He was in Spaceballs at Doctor Schlocken. I'm going to redo her nose and <laughs> high anxiety and everything else. And he was just so cool. a, a fantastic guy to deal with, to work with, and. Um, and also Eddie Deason, if you remember him from, um, what was it, Greece? It was a cartoon network. He was um, in Dr. Uh, Evil Scientist and what, Dexter's, Dexter's Laboratory. And, of course, all-time oh. favorite family film is um, The Polar Express. And he was at, hey, I ain't oh, no kid, you know, this is what happened on this day. And that was Eddie Deason. He was just fantastic. Really? Wow. Yeah, it was great. And I had Richard Carn from Home Improvement. He's an avid golfer. And I'd love to have him on my um golfing for some one day, although I don't golf much. I used to, but wouldn't mind having him on along with a few others. And of course I had, um, I'm trying to think Lisa Wilcox from the N- nightmare on Elm street. And I also had, um, Lisa London, who was, um, an actress in a few movies, diehard angels baseball fan. Her dad was like one of the, uh, first, um, announcers for the, um, California angels back then. And it was Jack London. And I wow. also had, um, you know, just quite quite a number. I mean, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. And I think the best one I had was Willie Muller from Major League. If you guys remember watching it back in 89, he was the Duke and he always threw it at his son's head. And he had very interesting stories. He also pitched the Milwaukee Brewers, knew Bob Euchre really well. And the funny part was that he did not like Corbin Benson at all because Corbin Benson would scream to somebody, somebody dust my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I just had a good time. If you go to my website, themikewagnershow.com, you can check out Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, just check any person you want to um, check out. And um, you got it right there. Just It's just amazing. I love what I'm doing. That's so awesome. let me ask you a question here, Mike, Mike Wagner. So you've interviewed a lot of people. And was some of the interviews, did they end up being a, a disappointment, let's say, or even a disaster? Not at all, because I make things very interesting. And if I suspect something that's going to be disappointing, I find some way to um, liven it up, be creative and whatever else. And um, I have not ha- really had a lot of disappointing interviews. Um, well, well, maybe just a few that the person was really shy or maybe just um, nervous. Maybe we had a person that just outright had a bad day. And I had one, of course, not going to mention names that um you know, I said, oh, you're a 13th generation. You've done this for a long time. I says, no, it, it was just told. And I said, oh, my gosh. You know, it's just like, you know, you know, some of the things that just, you know, that just uh, that surprises. But, of course, you know, some people have bad days. Some people have good days. And, of course, you know, some of us are off. Some of us are human, whatever else. But I have to right. say this is that if you guys listen to my shows, it's like 
I always make things very interesting or find a way. And I, and I think I did one time too, that, um, I threw in a couple of bizarre questions, not just open the floodgates for, um, making a really good interview. So you got to find something, you will throw a curveball, just make things interesting. Well, who's been the most comical? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, Oh, I, I'm at the go. I'm at the go to my, um, micro piece they call it in the old days dennis worth was hilarious he, he's out of boston he's a boston comic and i had um you know Artie hoffman he's a psychic and he was just made me laugh and i went we went laughing like five straight minutes alan gitlin he's a comedian in new jersey and um he was in a film with jennifer aniston and he was in a couple of uh commercials and he was in a youtube video and and i think um o- other celebrities in their ways like authors writers and um and I, and I think like, you know, in different areas and they made me laugh in many ways. So, you know, even like teachers, ordinary people and, um, some, some will crack jokes that just made me laugh like crazy. Well, actually I had one person on and we talked about like, you know, end of the world, no, this, no, that, and everything. So it's just like, you know, it's not just the comedians that make me laugh. It's just ordinary everyday people that make me laugh. Well, sometimes those comedians job. are only only funny because you know they they have good writers. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. not 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 everybody's just naturally funny. And but I'm with you. I think some of the the funniest people are the people I know in real life that that are, are just that's who they are. Mm-hmm. And, so. and and of course, you look at Bob Hope as well too. They say he's like one of the <laughs> best comedians, but he grills his writers like crazy. He's just like just puts enormous pressure on us. Like, if you don't make me laugh in this one or audience doesn't laugh you're pretty much fired you know he, yeah but i know really someone he, <laughs> i know someone mike wagner that ran into bob hope and knows bob hope <laughs> knew bob hope personally and really yeah, and matter of the fact he's in touching distance of bob hope you know anybody like that mike tarnow i i i, I let me think yes <laughs> yes i do <laughs> well, in, in 1987, there was a Bob Hope show at Pope Air Force Base in North Carolina, where I was at. And uh, Ronald Reagan was there, and he showed up for one of the a, a, a short segment. But anyway, they taped the show. That one-hour show took a week to to record back in the old days. And um, and I, and my squadron was a com- communication squadron, easy for me to say, and would be had backstage access to all these people. I Phyllis Diller. I have to say, was the best celebrity I have ever met in my life. She was fantastic. She kissed me on the cheek every day. She saw me. She hugged me. She got nice. to know. Yeah, she got to know us, and 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 she really cared. You could just tell. Um, but I, I've got a, as a matter of fact, I've got a picture with Brooke Shields. I've got a picture with uh, Glenn Campbell. Uh, Barbara Mandrell was there. Lucille Ball, and uh, Bob Hope. And, you know, you hate to say anything, gosh, because he's such an icon and he's supposed to be so and and, and he might have just been having a bad week. You know, you don't know. L- like you said, people have bad days. We all have bad days. Mm-hmm. But every time Bob Hope would walk by, we would try to get his attention because he was like the star of the show. We wanted to we wanted to chat with him for a minute. He was the only one out of all the celebrities that were there that did not turn around and speak to us. Really? Mm-hmm. It, it's a very, very sad thing to say. And wow. I, I'm, I don't mean this to throw any kind of shade on him whatsoever. I'm just saying that that was what happened to us. And I, we were all shocked. Uh, but if you had a bar or bars or a cluster or a, a, a bird on your shoulder, it was a, it seemed to be a different story. Mm-hmm. And maybe because they were part of, of the production crew. And, you know, I, I really don't know. But all I know is that us enlisted guys never spoke to him at all the whole time. So, Wow. Yeah. That is something. Like I said, I, I, I even I hate to even say that, but it, it, it was it's factual. So mm-hmm. and, and of course, too, that, um, you know, there are stories about Johnny Carson as well, too, that being aloof as well, too. And I had um, a, a guest on there and said that um, Johnny Carson would just uh, stand by the stage, smoke a cigarette and he wouldn't look at anybody. But then when he get on stage, he acts like he's the most charming. He, he never got mm-hmm. to interact with anybody because the secret is that. That if you interact beforehand, you would just spoil the whole spontaneity. So there are some reasons behind the whole thing, too. It's just like, you know, you stand there and it's like you see him on stage. It's like spontaneity's right there. But if you just like, you know, do this whole oh, thing, yeah. it sounds like rehearsed sure. in a way. So, yeah, yeah. there are some reasons behind and everything yeah. else. 
Mm-hmm. And that and that's kind of what I we kind of gave him a, a pass. I mean, later on, we didn't at the time, but later on, you know, his name's on the marquee. He had a lot of pressure. There's there's a lot going on, and it was all on him. So yeah, he was probably just busy. But uh, but it was it was kind of kind of shocking. But you know, you, you hear about that aloofness of of celebrities quite a bit, and and I think a lot of the time they just they get tired of people wanting their ear. I would imagine. Mm hmm. And, and of yes. course, that's and of course, that's natural, too. It's like you hear about athletes, celebrities and everything else, you know, get into fights or, um, you know, get in arguments with people. It's like, you know, they get bugged. It's like a lot of times when they go when they go to a restaurant, they just want to be left alone. And um, there was a lady who I was good friends with and um, and she uh, catered to uh, the former quarterback of the um, or, or no, it was a coach of the Houston Texans. And it was uh, who is it? Um, Gary Schwab or something like that. He was. um. He played football and and he has his own place at the restaurant and the word is leave him alone and let him eat. Well, you know, I mean, I I, I get that. I think you know, if you're a celebrity and and everywhere you go, somebody stops you. We our hometown here in Cartersville, Georgia. We have um, um, Newman from the uh, Seinfeld. He's he's from here, born and raised here in Cartersville, and he comes. He still his parents still live here. He comes into town every year around Christmas time, and and my wife and I saw him at the Kroger probably gosh about twelve years ago, mm-hmm. and he he actually made the time to stop and talk with everybody, and everybody was all the uh, all the clerks and everything. He stopped and had pictures made. Back then, everybody had flip phones, so I mean there was no no great high quality pictures, and I think it went away with my flip phone. My picture did, but yeah, I mean. What a great guy. Wayne Knight. That's his name. Wayne He's Knight. A, yes. Wayne Knight. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's a he, that's a blasting past. I'll tell you. I think he was in yeah. Space Jam. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And he was he was in uh, the original um, um, uh, Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's right. OK. Yeah. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> and, and, he, and I remember he's in Space Jam trying to please Michael Jordan. Mark, and Michael's like, chill, dude. I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah 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 the, you know I, I i don't think i'd want to be stopped everywhere i went you know i mean you know i, I just i no, just want to be rich i don't want to be famous yeah mm-hmm. do this for fun next time you're at a restaurant and you know people are listening to you say to your wife or to whomever you're with just say so people can hear you say you know i've been here five minutes and nobody's asked me for my autograph <laughs> just do that just... <laughs> and then I you know be believable forgot about that <laughs> we, we went to dinner a few times and i thought to myself should i do this yet or not and i'm glad you reminded me that's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's oh right my idea. goodness <laughs> mike 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 uh, tarnow what other questions you got for this this big guy here this star oh, this celebrity gosh. mike wagner a- actually actually you two guys are the stars <laughs> i i'm i'm yeah. just a moderator just watching you guys just have fun here <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what we do though i mean this is we just have fun it, it, it we, we yeah, have that's good what the podcast is about yeah, we'll start with a script, as you know, and then sometimes we'll deviate from that script. But that's the that's the fun part. And uh, by the way, a little plug in that for the afternoon coffee with Mike and Tim. If you guys want to get a hold of us, it's uh, afternoon coffee podcast at Gmail dot com or Twitter afternoon Java. Right, Mike? That's right. Af- that's right. Afternoon Java. That's interesting. And where can we hear this uh, afternoon coffee podcast? I want to- oh, I'll afternoon. leave that to Mike. Oh gosh, I don't have it in front of me, but it is Although, iHeart. Yeah, but Twitter, we got Twitter. We've got yeah. uh, iHeart Radio, right? We've Stitcher, got... iHeart Radio, yeah. Apple, um, Google Podcasts. Uh, there, there's a list of about seven of them. So, so far, so good. We're we're getting it out there. Well, it's interesting. And uh, what what inspired you guys to uh, start a podcast like that and call it the Afternoon Coffee? Uh, Mike did. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, I you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm 55. I don't remember, but it we, oh. we did. Uh, <laughs> we we both love coffee, and we both like to chat over coffee. We've gotten together many many times. Uh, he lives. Tim lives um, about 30 miles away, 35 miles north of me, and we get together regularly and and um, and have coffee. Sometimes there's breakfast with it. But you know, to me, the best conversations are over coffee. You know, 
kind of relaxes you, stimulates the the mind a little bit, and and you know, and that's kind of what we're all about. We want to we want to put something out there that is going to be interesting, that is going to be you know just just intriguing. It's it's mostly geared towards people that are maybe have a thirty minute commute to or from work, and 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 they want to listen to something other than politics or or somebody trying too hard to make them laugh or or you know that kind of thing. It's like no nobody wants to be talked at. We a lot of times it's interesting to learn something. And, and talking to people maybe that you've never heard of prior to, then uh, you, you learn something. And, and I think for the most part, you learn that uh, this human condition is 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 the same mostly for everybody. We all have struggles. We all have victories. We all have uh, frustrations. And 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 it's just you know whether you're a celebrity or or a, 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 a seemingly nobody, we're all humans, and we all have the same kind of thing. So. That's mm. kind of where, where we're going with that. That is interesting. I agree. That is interesting. We'll check you guys out as well, too. And um, who are some of the famous guests that you have on your show? <laughs> you. <laughs> you are our, our inaugural interview. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> really? Yes. yes. Interesting. Very groundbreaking. I've been a number of groundbreaking ones, but I have to say this. This is the most interesting inaugural, I have to say that. And if it gets to 500 shows, you better play the first one. And just glorify <laughs> and promote the heck out of it. So oh, that's we what got that right. <laughs> as soon as we get this so, one in the can, we're putting it out there all over social media. And you know, now that we're doing interviews, it's going it's going out every week. So yeah, it's going to be great. Right. And we huh. we are absolutely looking for if somebody wanted to take us on on a national level, you'd be good with that, Mike Tarnow, right? Uh, yeah, let me check my schedule. Yeah, you know, I have an opening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have an opening. So we would we would just be humbled if uh, somebody would take it. What differentiates afternoon coffee from other podcasts? I don't know. What do you think so far? No, you know, <laughs> I think what I think what differentiates Good us. Answer. Yeah, Mike Tarnow and Tim Miller with <laughs> afternoon coffee is that we are you can trust us with your family we're clean uh, nothing would ever be off color and i i know that our podcast is interesting and what's good about mike and i doing what about five of these before we have guests five or six before guests right or how many is it eight mike? i think i think i think we've done seven or eight yeah seven or eight but what's this, yeah. good about that and not having guests on mike and i are getting our niche we're, we're learning one another and then mike wagner of course is our first guest ever so i'm just saying that this this podcast is down to earth. It's whatever it is, is in a good way that it's, it's clean. It's informative. We'll have uh, up-to-date topics. And so, and we will, um, we will have guests on that will be informative and entertaining. And I've got, I'm going to tell you something. I've got somebody coming on and I've, he's promised, promised us that he would be on the, the podcast and he's from the fear of the walking dead. And he's been on the event in the Avengers movies. And I, gosh, I'd hate to name drop because I don't know if he'll, he'll I, be on. I wouldn't do I, it. I, guess it's, I wouldn't do huh? it. Huh? I could I, do I it. I don't think I'd I? do it. No, I won't do it. But I'll tell you, this guy, he's been in major films as a, as a stunt guy, as an actor. And uh, he got to know me through Instagram by liking my stuff. I nice. put something on Instagram today and this actor liked a picture of my studio, you know, that I just revamped my studio. I'm, you know, ready for the next job and all that. But uh, he is, he's a tough guy. When you look at him, he's, and I'm going to have him on, on Skype because that would be cool for other people to see if we got that out anyway. But I, I know that this podcast is going to go places. And if we had sponsors, you won't regret it. And you'll have a, as good a time as we will. We will not disappoint and in any shape or form, Mike and I, we're going to make this happen. And, and of good. course, uh, don't forget to join me for coffee, too, and having some right now with you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. <laughs> it's, and, it's, and it's it's the 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 nectar of the gods. It, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful drink. Yes, Speaking it is. That, I, I enjoy coffee more than anything else. I don't know why. And, of course, I've got my other drink as well, too. And I got... Um, <laughs> Good old H2O, as you could tell. So yeah, well, here's a good you. secret for voiceover talents is to take 100% lemon juice right here and put it in pure water. That's a good thing for your voice. Mm -hmm. Lemon juice and water. You got yeah, some of that, 
Tarnow. One, one thing I noted. Well, actually, I have like a, a Gatorade mixture stuff okay. that I drink that uh, I drink that all the time. It kind of keeps you hydrated all the way through. But I learned this from a guy, uh, an, a fellow voiceover artist named Brad Highland. I'll drop his uh, name right here, but it's Granny Smith Apple Chips. And oh, if wow. you have any kind of any kind of mouth noise or whatever, you take a couple of these and put them in your mouth and kind of let it soften up and chew it up. And they taste great, but it eliminates a lot of that mouth noise. It's fantastic. Ooh. I learned it from him. That is amazing. I was going to share my story on how I got to drink Coke and everything. It's got corn syrup in it. My voice mm. teacher from uh, CBS Radio in New York State is like one of the big uh, network announcers back in the old days. You know, CBS News and everything else that um, he would he would have a diet Pepsi. And, and he said that anything with corn syrup would actually coat your vocal cords to, to make it ha- a more... Uh, smooth uh pleasant uh tone and everything else water is good but then also um dries up your voice after a while and then i got hooked on it and it's like you know what i'm doing right now just coat so that's what i'm doing here i'd be afraid with that that i would burp you know what i mean i'm thinking the belching i think i would i would ruin my microphone because or worse (laughs) or or worse (laughs) or worse or just like really walking the chocolate factory trying to get his way up it's like burp your way down (laughs) Hey, so, I want to say one more thing real quick. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna. If you don't mind, Mike, I'd like to use your platform to put. If somebody has either themselves or somebody they know that is worthy of being interviewed, I mean, if there's some unsung hero, somebody that was is so interesting to you, and, and you think everybody ought to hear their story, email us at afternooncoffeepodcast at gmail dot com. We would love to hear from you, and we've got about four or five guests coming uh, after Mike. And um, we, we, we would just love to have somebody interesting, somebody that you, nobody's ever heard of and that, that just blows your mind at how interesting they can be and, and what kind of story they have. That, that's kind of the thing we're looking at. So mm-hmm. anyway, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Tim. Oh, no, no, that's that's perfect along the line. I'm, I'm even going to have a tax collector, our, our local tax guy. <laughs> We're going to have him. So you can imagine the, the jokes that would fly. But, mm-hmm. you know, he's a good guy. He's running for election and. Uh, re-election and so but he's uh he's good and then i've got of course that hollywood actor that uh, hopefully will come but uh and also i've got a in illinois i got potentially i think he'll do it a senator and matter of the fact he went with us to the slums in Kibera, the oh, senator wow. and his wife and so that would be that would be good and also i had the opportunity to go to the um, American embassy there in Kibera, actually not the embassy, but at a undisclosed location that it said the embassy on it, it was an official place. We had a, like a, a state dinner or whatever you want to call it with engraved glasses and the napkins and all that. But it was the, the ambassador, uh, there in, uh, Nairobi. And so mm. we went to his house. So hopefully I can, uh, I've got their email. I can hopefully get him on, but I think it would be good to get a broad spectrum of people from all walks of life. And I like what you said, Mike Tarnell, in that uh, you've got a story to tell and maybe nobody has heard that story before, but guess what? This is the platform where you can hear it. Afternoon coffee podcast at gmail.com. So I- please email us. And then, of course, not to diminish um, the Mike Wagner show, definitely Mike Wagner is the guy. He's the go-to guy. You'd be on his program as well. Once again, just tell us uh, how we can um, get a hold of your podcast. You can email us at afternooncoffeepodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter at Afternoon Java. Guys, it's been fantastic, and thank you very much for your time. You, you're because great. we have one more question for you, Mike Wagner. Go ahead. And that is, if you were to go back and talk to Mike Wagner... Three years ago, what would you tell him? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, you can make it ten years ago if you want, but oh, oh, this, ten years ago. Yeah, it's let's like, go ten, ten years, years ago. It, yeah. It's just like you know, if you're asked Mike Wagner, it's like you're doing what? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a I got a whole list of stuff for me. Oh yeah, and of course yeah. we can talk about that in afternoon podcast, and uh, we can do it again as well too. Be on your show, and you guys are welcome to be on my show, and um. But I do love to see you guys uh, succeed. You guys are fantastic. You guys got just a great thing going. I have to say that. Thanks, Mike. You do, too. Thank you, you Mike. Too. All right. Thank you, guys. It's been fantastic. And um, hope to see you guys again soon. Look forward to having you on definitely later in 2020 and uh, maybe a little uh, Christmas party here or something. Yeah, that'd be great. 
Yeah. I'll tell you what, if we're going to get good. together at Christmas time, we are not going to North Dakota. There's a reason why we live in Georgia. You want to come down here, that's fine. That's right, buddy. <laughs> or or halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, southern Indiana. Let's go for that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, All right so. great, guys. Thanks for your time. You've been fantastic. Look forward to him again soon. This episode has been made possible by our awesome intro voice, Heather Foster. You can find out more about her at heatherfostervoice.com. All music has been provided and produced by Marble Planet Productions. You can hear more about them on Instagram at Marble Planet Productions. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can either email us at afternooncoffeepodcast at gmail.com or tweet us at afternoonjava. 